Three. Hi, my name is Louise. And hi, I'm Emma. You're listening to Murder or Myth. The true crime podcast where not everything is true. The aim of the game is to find out if the story is murder or myth. Now, let's get started. So Louise, my story for this week is Janine Jones. Okay. An Angel of Death. Angel of Death. An Angel of Death, yeah. Sounds spooky. So... I'll just enlighten everyone on what an angel of death is. So it's a type of ser- serial killer who takes it upon themselves to kill like vulnerable people. Okay. And it's generally a medical professional who kills their patients. So let's jump into... My story to start off with. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So Janine was born in 1950, in July. 1950, okay. And she was adopted... Um, as far as I can remember, by a nightclub owner and worked as a beautician before becoming a nurse in her late 20s. So she has two children with her high school sweetheart. She has a child, divorces him, get back together, child, and divorce again. So that's her Oh, so she married this man twice? Yeah, the okay. same man. So she's worked as a nurse in a county hospital in Texas. Okay. It was San Antonio. And she was a lower level sort of nurse that only required like two years of education. I think that they were called like licensed vocational nurse. And it was in the pediatrics area she was in. Okay. So after working for a bit in this San Antonio hospital, all of the LVNs, so the nurse type that she was, got asked to resign from the hospital as it had a really high an unlikely statistical number for deaths in the children's ICU. So, so all the pediatric nurses in that all the LVN pediatric lower nurses. level pediatric nurses were asked to resign. Okay. So they were all asked to resign because the hospital knew something was going wrong but had to let everyone go for fear of being sued. They couldn't fire them or they couldn't investigate into it or point fingers. Would they not get sued for letting everyone go? Mm, no, I think they were asked to resign, so they were kind of compensated. Oh, yes, like, it okay. wasn't kind of... Fired. Is... Yeah, in a bad way. So, no investigation was done thoroughly into that due to fear of being sued. So now the hospital only has registered nurses, so okay. proper, proper nurses. So Janine moves on, works in a pediatric clinic in another area of Texas. I think it's like to the north. And it's only small. It only has one doctor and herself as the medical professional staff. So they're tipping along, doing a nice job. And the next thing, the doctor finds two puncture marks in a bottle of succinylcholine, which is immediately set off alarm with the doctor because only her and Janine have access to the drug storage. Okay? And I'll just get into that in a minute. I'll I'll describe what that is. So even though the bottle appeared full, the doctor thought it was Dodge, okay? Because this drug is a paralytic that is used in anesthetic, like in conjunction with other stuff. But when given to children by itself, it can cause cardiac arrest. And that means then all the muscles are paralyzed. So the lungs don't work. And then you go into failure due to no oxygen getting around the body. And And so is the kid supposed to be having this? No. This is only, this drug is only used for anaesthetic. Oh, in very small amounts? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the doctor finds that bottle having seeming full, but like a lot of puncture marks, and she's like, I haven't used this. So then it was at this stage that she was found out. She was charged with poisoning six children at this clinic. She claimed she was trying to start up a pediatric ICU at the clinic. So she was intentionally, this is her claim, intentionally slightly poisoning the children, trying to get a ICU intensive care unit for them and this was about so she's doing this like for the good of the hospital the clinic that was her story when it all came to light but this is around she was only 32 at this stage so given the information that she was later charged and sentenced to 99 years for killing a 15 month year old girl and with this drug and her name was Chelsea McClellan and then she got 60 years for killing another lad called Roland Santos She was 35 when she went to jail and she was due to be released in 2018, but due to some law about overcrowding in American jails. So they pinned another child murder on her to prevent her release, which was true. She done it. Okay. So she killed three children in total. Yeah. The story continues. Okay. (laughs) After being charged with killing an 11 month old, she got another life sentence, which means brings her up to... She's still in jail. She's still in jail. Um, So... They keep doing this to ensure she spends her life in jail, um, even though that law that lets her kind of seemingly be able to get out. So all in all, she has only been convicted of three murders, 
but is responsible for up to 60 infant deaths. Oh God. The exact number is unknown. Two hospitals have misplaced or destroyed records so they don't get in trouble liability themselves. How All did of- the other hospital not know that there was like 50 deaths happening? Yep, they, they just thought that kids were dying. No, that's why they fired everyone because they knew they someone had a was- high number. But can invest in it. How did the parents like look into the fact that that many kids died? I'm sure it was just a huge cover up scheme, like on autopsies and really sick children, Mm. unfortunately. That seems like a large number. Okay. Anyways, all of the deaths were done through injecting drugs that induce medical emergencies in patients, ultimately cause death, especially due to them being children and vulnerable and sick already. Yeah. And the three drug names were heparin, digoxin, and uh, the other one was succinylcholine. And that's okay. the end of the story. Okay, she is 72 story. years old today and she is still in jail. Is it her 72nd birthday? No, or it's just exactly 70. July 13th. July 13th, okay. And she was adopted. Why was she put up for adoption? Any of that reveals? No, no, I didn't. How did it come to light, today. actually? No. Or was she adopted by two parents? Yes. But I just know that her father was a nightclub owner. Oh, there was a nightclub owner. Okay. Because it seems so dodgy that the hospital and parents didn't look up to that many, look into that many deaths. Like I can't imagine how many kids would be near death in a children's <laughs> ward. Yeah. In a hospital. Okay. So that makes me believe it's a myth. Okay. So your final answer. That's my final answer. It's a myth. Final answer. It's a myth. Final answer. It's a myth. Final answer was wrong, Louise. Shit. Janine Jones, it's a real life story. How did they not? The angel of death. Not look into that many deaths. Like, surely one of the families noticed that loads of kids were dying. Yeah, well, now, definitely someone could have. In my research, I just didn't yeah. study upon it. But, but I guess but the hospital was able to just go She got out. away with it and yeah. moved to a new place and done the same thing again. So, thankfully, they could trace it her back to the deaths in the smaller hospital due to being like more evidence and yeah. she's the only one there with the doctor so at least she <laughs> got horrific. stopped and that was early on in her life as well. So. There was another story that was similar to that that another made a Netflix show of, The Good Nurse. Did you see that? Oh yeah. I and I thought I thought maybe you were copying that so that's why I thought it was oh, a myth. No. Uh, um, no. Okay. okay. This has been Murder or Myth with your hosts Louise and Emma. This week's episode stumped Louise being a murder and not myth. Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another thrilling adventure. Find us on all streaming platforms. Remember, it's myth until proven murder. Schlau.